Hey guys, welcome back to The Art of Craftsmanship. My name's Dustin, and today in the shop we're gonna be making sheaths for three knives that I finished up recently in videos. Now the first one is the Railroad Spike Knife, and this is made for one of our supporters on Patreon, Cadence James. Uh, the second knife is the little bone handled knife, and this was made for my daughter Corinne for Christmas. And then just recently we finished up our knife making build along, and this knife is made for my brother Devin behind the camera. When I'm giving away knives, I always like to be able to give them away or sell them with a sheath because that's there to protect the knife and also to protect the person from the sharp knife. Uh, so today we'll be making these sheaths, and anytime you're doing leather work or sheath making, um, it's really about following a process, be very process oriented, because if you don't follow those steps, you can often get into get further along on the build, and then you realize you missed something, or you have to go back, and it can either screw up the craftsmanship of the sheath, or you have to go back and actually cut out or start all over. So. Again, with leather work, it's really much about that process. So today, in this video, we're gonna start off by actually making a checklist of all the steps that we need to do. That way, as we're walking through, we can kind of check them off as we go, and then we'll know that by the time we get to the end, we'll have everything done. And the nice thing about doing three sheaths all at one time is that we can work through each of those steps of the process and you know make sure we finish each before we move on to the next. So let's go ahead and get started. So I worked through all the steps, kind of worked them through my head, wrote them down, figured them all out. I think this is pretty good. It's pretty much from step one to 18 all the way through the whole process. Um, I did write it in pencil, so if we need to make any changes along the way, we can. But first thing we'll do, we'll go ahead and start with step one, which is tracing the knife on the leather. So I wanna make sure I have enough room here to be able to add my space for my welt, and then obviously enough room on the other side to be able to fold the knife over on the other side. Um, so we just have to have both. So I'll trace out the blade first around the bottom and the side, and then I'll roll it over across the handle and then trace out again, and then we'll work our way around it. Now when you are marking off where the top of your handle is, you want to kind of go right past the widest point. Now this is kind of an even taper from the beginning to the end of the handle, so I'm gonna come about maybe two thirds of the way up the handle um, and mark it off there. And what that does is it'll help when I, when I wet mold the knife around the handle, it will help it to sit in and mold tight. So that way there's a tight spot at the top that the knife has to go through the widest part and kind of click and lock into your sheath. Now I'm measuring out the welt. I did my half inch all the way up, but when I reach the handle, I want to add a little bit more. So that way I'm, when I'm wrapping the leather around, make sure that I have enough that the leather can come back together and put the welt inside. So I'm going out to three quarters of an inch. Now I'm setting up for my belt loop. I don't want to start my belt loop exactly in the middle of the sheath because when you bend it around, it just kind of makes it hard to bend that loop back. Uh, so I'm going to come over about three eighths of an inch and then start my way up. And this belt loop is going to be seven eighths of an inch wide because it's a, for a small knife and a small belt. This will be my daughter's uh, knife. So I'm coming seven eighths. Normally I would go an inch, but this should be more than enough. And this will also center this belt loop uh, so when it comes down here, I have enough for the belt, it'll be centered in the narrowest part of the sheath. I don't want to go too far over because then it's going to be off center. I want it to be centered uh, with the narrowest part. So this will just come straight down here. Now that I have the tracing done for the first knife, I'm going to do the same exact thing for the next two knives. Just finished up step two, and now I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the leather. I have all my sheaths cut out and now I need to cut out leather for my welts. So I'm gonna be just tracing along 
and cutting that out. That way it fits exactly into this uh, profile. Now the welt is the piece of leather that's going to be cut out and stitched and glued in between the two layers of the leather sheath. And the welt is designed to uh, be there that way when you put your knife in and out, you're not actually, uh, you don't run the risk of cutting your stitches. So it's just in between those two layers. I'm gonna mark off the top of each of these loops with a circle that I can trim, and then I'll fold it back and I'll mark off where it's gonna go on the back of the sheath. Let's see, let's see, right down here, looks like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna make a mark around here. So I'll know where not to die. Now we're gonna set these up and we're gonna do three different types of dyes or three range. We wanna do the smallest one for my daughter I'm doing with my range tan and that's gonna be just kind of a rich tan, you know, orangey dye for the first one. Uh, the middle one I kinda wanna do a kind of a middle dark brown and for the largest one my brother wants it to be really dark so what I'll try to do is I'll hit it, be both of these with the same dye um, and then I'll add more layers of the dye on the largest one for my brother. And if it doesn't go as dark as I want it to go, then I can pick up a darker dye and we'll try it again and put it on top of that one. So we just ran into our first misstep and that is edge beveling. That's something I forgot to write down when I was marking off all my steps. Now I wanna make sure I go around and I bevel the edge of all the way around the top and around the belt loop because once I dye everything and I stitch it down, I'm not gonna be able to access that. And so I wanna finish that whole top off first. So I'll bevel the front and the back of all three sheaths. Once the leather is wet with the first coat of dye, it'll take the second or third or however many coats you want a little easier. Now that's important because if you don't do multiple coats, your dye for your uh, leather is gonna look pretty streaky. So you wanna make sure you hit it with multiple coats and when it's wet, it moves a lot quicker. finished all the leather dye and as it's sitting and kind of soaking in, I'm gonna move over to step seven, which is actually finishing that top edge and the belt loop. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let the wetness of that leather dye uh, activate the edges. So I'm gonna use my burnisher and I'll burnish those edges so that way everything's finished on the top and all the way around the edge of the belt loop. I scored both sides and roughed up both sides of where I'm gonna attach the belt loop, and that's because I'm working with the smooth side of the leather. So you wanna make sure you kind of score it and rough it up, so that way the glue has something to stick onto and grip onto uh, when, you know, when you're attaching it. If you're working on the other side, the rough side, it's not a biggest deal, you don't really have to do it, but on the smooth side, you wanna make sure you score it and rough it up. So now I'm just mixing up the contact cement Make sure it's nice and well mixed. I'm gonna add a little bit of contact cement to both sides of where I'm gonna attach, and I'll let that glue dry completely. Um, and then I'm gonna go back and I'll add, once that's completely dry, I'll add another layer onto both sides and I'll let that kind of dry partially and get tacky, and then I'll be able to stick that together. It'll hold really well.
Oh. I'm gonna go ahead and bend these over and glue them down and clamp them, but I'm just adding a little bit of water right in the bend where the leather loop is gonna bend just to help it bend a little bit smoother and nice and cleanly. Now contact cement will basically bind up pretty much instantly, but I'm gonna leave these clamps on for about four or five minutes, that way I know they're nice and secure and tight before I start marking and drilling out my holes. And I'm gonna start marking these off before I drill them on the drill press. And I wanna, I'm just doing this by eye, kind of measuring everything out evenly and separating it so that way I get a nice kind of half circle, you know, shape around the outside of this. I'm gonna be using artificial sinew for my stitching and I'll be doing the saddle stitch and I'll be doing that all the way around the leather. Uh, but for this one, I'll be putting a needle on both ends to the saddle stitch and kind of working my needles back and forth through the same hole. But I'll show you that a little bit more in detail. I'm gonna start my needle going through one side and when I bring this through, I'm just gonna even up my two threads. So I know that I have the same amount of thread on either end one needle through the next hole. I'll pull it tight and then I'll take my other needle and I'm gonna go back through that same hole that I just came out of to the other side. Let me just go ahead and pull those tight. Let me just keep continuing doing the same thing. So through the next hole with one needle Pull it through all the way, and then my second needle go back through that same hole. Pull it through. And I'll just continue all the way around that same way. I made it all the way around to my initial stitch, and now I'm just back stitching over my first two stitches again, and it'll help to lock everything in place. I'm cutting these about an eighth of an inch or so, and then that'll leave me just a little bit left over and I'll just burn those flush. And that's nice, it just, it singes that and makes it into a little lump. And because this is an artificial sinew, it just binds together and it'll hold really nice and tight. That's the first one, now we'll go ahead and do the other two. So I just found my second misstep and that's actually cutting a groove down, a few grooves down the middle of the fold. And those just are gonna relieve that um, leather so that way when I fold the leather and when I wet mold it, I can pinch really tightly on the spine of the blade.
My next step is going to be gluing in the welts. Now there's a little bit of stuff that I need to do to prepare these welts before I do that. First is gonna be scuffing up and scoring the smooth side of the leather. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and fit it to the sheath. I'll probably trim the top a little bit and then also I'll trim about an eighth of an inch or so off the bottom. That way when it's all folded and done, uh, there'll be a little recess, a hole at the bottom of the pocket of the sheath. That way if you ever got water or something like that inside your sheath, it would have something to run out, have a space to run out of the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and glue it up now and I'm gonna follow the same process with the glue up that I did for the bell loops. I'm gonna glue and fold these all together, but I wanna wet the spines before I do that. That'll just help the leather to soften up a little bit and bend a little easier, make a nice clean bend. I'm gonna wet all three sheaths, and then I'm gonna glue up both sides of all three, and then I'll fold them together. As I fold this, I'm just making sure that I'm putting my main connections, lining them up exactly where I want them to go before I squeeze down too tight because once you get this down, it's really not gonna be able to move too much. So uh, and it's okay if there's a little bit of uh, difference between the outer edge because we're gonna clean all this up on the sander next. You can see here that the welt kind of overlaps a little bit on all three of these, so I'll trim these up, clean these up with uh, the knife, and then I'll use my edge beveler to bevel the edges of the front and back. Step number 12 is marking your holes and drilling. Um, and I wanna adjust, I'm using a, a groove tool and this tool will actually cut a groove all the way along and I'll be able to use that to mark my holes in. So I know that way they're the same distance all the way from the edge all the way around. The trick I'm gonna show you guys is something that I've learned and I've kind of developed over time because I've done this really wrong a bunch of times and it's come out looking horrible. But the, the idea is like, how do you drill through the sheath so that way all of your lines come through as even as possible on the back because there's no guideline on the back, we're just drilling straight through with a drill press. Now I have a piece of wood here uh, with a recess drilled into it um, and I have my drill bit set up just on that edge so I can use this as a lip and that way when I'm drilling, I can kind of put my sheath on and I can look to make sure that I'm drilling straight up and down. 
and as I'm working my way down, I can just keep that on there, keep looking down this, and it should come out pretty nice and even. So I'll show you guys at the end how that works on the back side. Nice and even, because I was able to sight down, keep them going straight up and down. I'm using my awl now to go back and open these holes up a little bit more because my next step will be doing the stitching for all this and I'll be doing the same saddle stitch. This way I'll be able to easily access these holes from the back with the needle. Now that we have everything stitched up, I'm gonna go ahead and dye the edges the same color as the sheath, and I'll burnish it at this point as well. Uh, when I'm doing my wet molding for my sheaths, I'm gonna have to wrap all the blades in cellophane plastic wrap just to make sure they don't get wet uh, because they're all high carbon blades and if they get wet, they're gonna rust and they're gonna be sitting inside these sheaths. My other trick is to use some oil. I use some three in one oil and I'll coat the blades really well in oil and then wrap them up. That way when I put them in the sheaths when they're wet molding, they won't have any chance of getting wet or getting rusty. All right, guys, it's the next day. I came down last night and I just took all the knives out of the sheaths and unwrapped them from the cellophane just to make sure no water got inside and I didn't want any rust spots starting. So let me show you now. The sheaths have had some extra time to dry and now the knives just fit really nice and snug in each one. They fit, fit great. I'm really happy with the fit. I'll show you that. So now the next step is to actually use the groove tool and add a little detail to all three sheaths. Now my grooving tool is already set to the same depth as what I did my stitches for. So I'm gonna run this across the top of the sheath to add the detail on the top. And then I'll come back and I'll adjust the depth of this to actually meet up with that tool. And then I'll run a second groove line all the way down the edge.
We're moving on to step 15 now, which is finish dyeing. And I put that in specifically because when, you know, at this point, there's always some spots where I want to go back and hit with a little bit more dye to even it up. Uh, the back of these usually kind of dry out a little bit more, so they're a little lighter. So I'm going to hit all three backs, a few spots, and also the belt loops to make sure they're nice and clean before we move on to oiling. Now my next step is to actually burnish and finish the edges, but I'm gonna use the wetness of the oil. So I'm gonna oil the leather sheaths first, and then I'll use while the leather is still wet from the oil, I'll use that wetness to burnish the edges. Super happy with the way these turn out. I love this rich, dark color of the sheaths when you oil them up, they just look beautiful. This one especially, we really wanted this one to get dark and you guys remember I talked a little bit about maybe you know adding more layers and getting you know really dark and maybe going to black, but I just think the warmth, the richness of this dark brown is just beautiful. And the, the oil really kicks it, just makes it that much nicer. Now, usually what I would do is I'd come back over a lighter thing like this and I'd add edge coat. And edge coat is kind of like a waxy paint uh, that goes on and it just protects that edge completely. Um, and it get, makes a nice even look. Now, a lot of times I like that look, but for some, some sheaths, you know, I think it just looks nice to have the kind of the edge. You can see all the layers uh, built up in there and you get a little variation. I think for all three of these, I like the way they're gonna look, just the natural edge. So I won't be using edge coat on these, but just leaving the edges of the leather the way they are. All right, we made it to step 18, our final step. We're gonna go ahead and put on the Carnuba cream and we'll buff it to get a nice shiny finish. I'm briefly using a heat gun just to warm these sheaths up, also to help that carnauba cream dry and help the wax that's in those sink into the leather a little bit better. All right, guys, well, these turned out really nice. I'm super happy with them. I love the look of all three. They really turned out, you know, the way I wanted them to. And I think a big part of that was being able to write down all my steps and follow those steps. I had to fill in a few little spots, but really just like having everything written down and being able to follow along, especially with leather work is really important. You don't want to miss a step or have to go back and tear things out. It really can, you know, it ends up giving your product something that's not as fully and highly crafted as you want. And if you want to get to an end product that has really high craftsmanship and looks really nice and professional, a lot of times it's really important to write those steps down and give yourself a guideline beforehand. So these all turn out really beautiful. I love this really dark one. This was the knife that I made for the Knife Talk build along. This is for my brother Devin. This sheath turned out really nice and nice and dark, which is what he wanted. Uh, and then also I made the Railroad Spike knife. This was made for Cadence James, one of our subscribers. And that turned out really nice as well. Fits really well in there and nice and clean. And lastly is a little bone handle knife that I made for my daughter, Corinne, for Christmas. Um, I love this little knife, and now she has a nice sheath to be able when we go backpacking and camping and stuff like that. It'll be nice and fun. These all turned out really nice. If you haven't already and you're interested in seeing, I made videos for all three of these knives, so you can go and check them out on my earlier videos. And I'll also put a link in the description down below. That way you can find them nice and easily. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, we'd love for you to subscribe and like this video and leave us some comments. Let us know what you think about these sheaths and uh, you know just our channel in general. We'd love to build that community. 
Um, check us out on Instagram at The Art of Craftsmanship. I love putting up stuff there. And lastly, if you want to find another way to support the channel, you can go and we set up a Patreon page. Go check us out over there. Um, for you know a fairly small price, you can support the channel every month and it makes a big difference for what we can do here. So thank you guys all so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.